Hello, everybody. Hello, Dr. Nick. It's old Simpsons. Simpsons reference, huh? I thought I would try to do something useful today, something that might help other people. I am a long-time model car builder, and I had gotten to the point where I was making my own parts. Uh, kit parts didn't... At the time, there was a lot of kit parts that were not available that are now. Uh, so you had to resort to scratch building. One of the things I was always interested in was larger scale model cars. The um, There's not a whole lot of those available, so you have to create parts for them if you want to do something other than box stock. So today I am going to explain a small, simple method of scaling, uh, going from a small scale up to a much larger scale, such as for this car to this car. This method is probably, <clears throat> I think, two to three thousand years old. It was used by uh, sculptors. Uh, currently, it's used by uh, map readers and artists for scaling up photos. Uh, if you're doing it manually, not through uh, not through a computer. This little guy right here is called a proportional divider. It goes by a couple other names, but that's the name I'm most familiar with. Uh, if you look it up on eBay, uh, Amazon, so forth, that's probably the name you'll find it under, is Proportional Divider. <coughs> this guy is super simple. All it is, is a pair of arms that are joined together by a hinge. These arms, you can see the slots here, you can adjust the pivot point. When you adjust that pivot point, you change its proportional ratio. So basically what this guy does is based on the ratio that you assign it here by moving it up and down, you can say, okay, this is one inch and one twenty-fifth scale. This is one inch and one sixth scale, or what have you. I usually go from one twenty-fifth to one eighth, but lately for this guy it's one sixth. I have a couple different ones, and ones I've just picked up over the years. Um, you can usually, you'll usually pay around 20 to 120 bucks for them on eBay, depending on what the seller believes they're worth. Um, around 100 bucks, they're a little overpriced in my opinion. You can pick up pretty decent ones for 20 bucks uh, or so. This is my very first one. Uh, this is a U.S. Army spec. You probably cannot read that. This camera is going to be making a whole lot of noise when it focuses on. on sorry for that it's got an issue don't know what it is but anyhow I bought this guy for 20 bucks probably about 10 15 years ago I have it currently set let's see if we can zoom in and get a little bit of a view of the markings on there there's going to be several different markings on here called lines and circles I don't know what those mean I am not a map guy but I do know that the numbers on the lines side is a direct proportion so if you pick two you're doing a proportion of two to one so one inch two inch three one inch three inches so forth uh, it's really that quite simple uh, there's instructions for making these out of wood on the internet i did see those so if you wanted to go with a much larger one or if you have a set proportion that you know you're going to constantly use uh, if you trust your your woodworking skills or, or you can even make it out of pieces of aluminum, you know uh, If you trust your skills, you can make a pretty good one um, You don't have to spend 20 to 100 bucks on it I usually just go ahead and buy them because my measuring and cutting is not that precise So leave it to the experts This guy is at 3.125 I set it a little bit above 3. There's not that kind of increment on here um, so I set it a little bit above three, and what you can do, it involves a little bit of messing around with measurements, but you can go in and say, okay, this is one inch on this end, and then confirm this is 3.125 on this end. And you can convert the decimal to a fractional. You know, there's software to do that on the internet, free programs to do that. Um, basically you can use that to set the proportions now to figure out your ratio gets a little bit involved I 
use a piece of software called ScaleMaster. Uh, it was written in 2001, 2002. I've used it probably since then. Uh, it's a wonderful little program. It was written by um, a model building enthusiast. I'll put a link in the bottom of the video for that program uh, so you can download it. It has this amazing feature where you can do scale conversion. So you can type in one centimeter and say, well, the current scale is 125th. So you want to scale up to 1 sixth, you type in, you know, 1 sixth, hit calculate, and it will tell you the measurement in 1 sixth. Um, wonderful program. The other way you can do this is my calculator. It's part of my beat up old calculator. So let's say you know that your wheel on your, your 25th scale car is 15 inches. That's a, that's a pretty much a given. You can go and take your calculator and you take your measurement, uh, we'll say 15, multiply that for a 125th to 1 8th scale measurement. The ratio is 3.125. I figured that out from that program. So we'll go times 3.125, 47. So if you were doing inches, 1 inch, to you know, 15 inches in uh, eighth scale, I think is what I'm trying to say, would be 47 inches. Or conversely, you can do that by centimeters, millimeters. I tend to go by millimeters and round it off because I don't care about being that precise. When I need to be that precise, then I'll usually go fractional inch or something like that. So you can figure out different dimensions like that. Um, one of the things that this guy is most handy for is quick on the fly comparisons such as between my 125th scale 36 Ford and my 16th scale 36 Ford. This is a 1/6 scale uh, 36 Ford. It was a Jesse James uh, branded RC car. It is modeled after a real car that he owns uh, with its horrible screwed up chop and everything. The paint on this guy is burnt. I was trying to strip it with oven cleaner uh, which historically worked really well. Uh, it doesn't anymore. I don't know if the paint is better on these guys or if oven cleaner has changed and gotten wimpier. But <clears throat> that's why it looks like an unholy mess is that some of the paint's off. Some of it is just burnt. And I'm going to have to find a different meth method of stripping that paint off. Maybe the uh, purple cleaner, brake fluid is another method. Um, there is a graffiti remover available at like your Home Depot, your Lowe's. I've tried it. It works reasonably good on other paint. Let me try it on this. But anyhow, off subject. So what I am going to do is I am going to turn Homeboy here into a five window coupe. This is currently a, a or excuse me, from a five window coupe to a three window coupe. So this guy's five window. One, two, three, four, five. You don't count the windshield. Little guy here is a three one to one, two, three. Don't count the windshield. So I am using this guy as measurements for what I need to do to this guy. I have my divider. It's already been calibrated. Um, I believe the calibration is the ratio is 4.17. So I got close to four, went up a little bit, did my measurements. You know, one centimeter, 4.17 centimeters. Um, to confirm that my ratio is correct. And again, you just loosen that up, slide it up and down, tighten it back up, and that pivot is your ratio. So we'll take that guy there. And here's an example of what I use it for, why I really like these. So let's say I want to figure out how long <coughs> my door is actually supposed to be. I could take a ruler and measure on the 25th scale car, take that measurement, multiply it by one or excuse me 4.17 and get the answer uh, I could do a quick line of sight by using a divider so I'll take the divider you can't see the lines on here so just trust me I'll take the guy here and match up the little points on the door opening you can see how wide this got so we then take this guy and we can figure out very quickly that the door opening is supposed to be about right here. So that's where my door opening is going to be. I'll confirm that with a measurement 
just because I want to be relatively precise on that. Um, this car is fairly accurate. The, the nose of it is a little bit wide, about right through there. But the fender shape, everything like that, is actually pretty close to, to being accurate. The trunk opening is different because it's a five window, not a three window. Three windows have shorter roof lines. They end about right here and then go up. So I'll use a combination of the proportional divider and the ruler to, to get all the measurements correct. So, for instance, uh, let's say window opening. I'm curious. I am going to use this body. This is a, I think, a mid-60s release of the AMT 36 Ford three-window coupe. I picked this guy up at a model car show uh, many, many years ago. Um, I've always liked to chop on this guy. It's got a beautiful profile. It is patterned after a real car. I believe it was a Wester Guard uh, car that the modeler or the uh, developers measured and then created this top from. So it's got perfect proportions. So what I'll do is let's say I want to figure out how tall the window opening is. I'll take the divider set the points there on the window. Let me see if I can get this guy a little bit closer. Camera's going to make some noise because it's a piece of crap. So we'll go and measure the window and here is our measurement in one six scale. So we can say oh, okay this window is really damn close. I'm actually going to have to raise the chop up on this um, probably about five millimeter it looks like more or less. So we can do that. We can take the rear window and go in here and we can say okay about right there and we can see that the rear window is actually really close to being accurate I went ahead and did that with a whole bunch of shapes on this car the, the width of it um, you know the wheel opening sizes the, the length of the openings things like that um, and again you can make these guys out of wood it's probably going to be worth or metal it's probably going to be worth my time at some point to make one of these that goes much larger because you can see it's only going to go so far before things get distorted so I could really use one that will go from you know here to here and I can make that sucker out of wood I know the proportions that I need the length and where to set the pivot at a ratio of 4.17 uh, and just make it you know unadjustable solid um, non-adjustable sorry um, and use that to figure out the rest of these measurements. It's a quick, easy way to get the information that you need uh, when you're comparing scales. Um, I picked up on this stuff again when I was doing 1 8 scale stuff. I still like to do 1 8 scale every once in a while, but my current attention is on 1 6 scale. Uh, this guy's going to be a computer case, actually. I'm going to turn it into a Wester Guard um, early 1940s style custom with the narrow. Um, probably LaSalle grill, 36 LaSalle, and it's going to be turned into a three window coupe. So the top's going to come back a little bit farther and just the doors, fender skirts, etc. Um, I believe that is all that I can help with. But, you know, again, the dividers and measurements. So, you know, for instance, if I wanted to figure out the length of this rough, I could go from here to here. We'll stick the roller in there, get the measurement, we can divide it, you know, 120 millimeters, what have you. Uh, divide that by 4.17 and get the size in 25th scale and compare it to this. So it's a very, very handy technique to have. Uh, very, very useful. So again, proportional dividers. Uh, you get them on eBay, 20 to 120 bucks, sometimes a little bit more if people think they're antiques and worth a lot of money. They come in a lot of different materials and some different sizes. This guy is a little bit bigger than my government issue one. This one was a government probably used on a ship uh, for maps. Um, so those that's what these are and that's how they can help you. And I hope that helps you. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya.